What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, after learning how to link an architectural model to our uh, MEP project, so the next topic that we're going to discuss now is sharing the projects using uh, worksets. Okay, so what is the what what is worksets? So worksets is actually a collection of elements in a building that can be edited by a project team member. So other team members can view the elements in a work set but cannot edit them. Okay? But there is an option in work set wherein you can actually edit others uh, work set if that one is not assigned to any particular user. Okay? But basically uh, it would be better that others cannot edit them. This prevents possible conflicts that may be caused when two or more team members try to simultaneously modify an element. So team members can save the changes made to work sets in a local copy. I'm going to show you how to create that one later on. They can also publish their work uh, to other team members by synchronizing the changes with the central file. So I'm going to show you how to create a central file and a local copy. Okay. And the other team members reload the central file to view the changes. Okay, so if required, team members can borrow elements from work sets being edited by other team members by sending edit requests and permission over the network. All right, so let's get started. So for this one, um, we're going to start our project without model. So we are going to create our new project. So new, I'll be using a system template. And then select OK. Systems template, uh, it consists all the discipline, the mechanical, electrical, uh, plumbing discipline for that. Now, for you to be able to start your work sharing, so you need to go to the collaborate, manage collaboration, and then there's the collaborate. So when you click that, you need to save first your model. So you have to save the model before you can collaborate with others. So we're going to save the model and then save it to your drive or to the network because you are uh, creating or setting up your project, your new project. So you need to save it in a server where the other team members can access it. So let's say this is the server. I'm going to create a folder here. So this is my project. Okay, so I'm going to save that inside that folder and then I'm going to name that, let's say, whatever project that you want, whatever project name that you want. Okay, so you save it. So that's the first step. So go to options. All right, so I'm just going to make this one. Okay, and then I'll select here. Okay, and then I'll save it. Right. Okay, so after we save the file, so we are now ready to collaborate. So we are not going to use the BIM 360 document management because I don't have a subscription for that. So I'll just use within the network. So if your company doesn't have a Beam 360 document management um, subscription, so you just need to work within your network. So that's fine. So you just use the within your network and then just select your OK. All right. So right now what we are doing is we are creating a central file. To make the work sets in a project available to all team members, you create a master project file, which is known as the central file. So this is the central file. So this file tracks the availability of each work set. A central file is created the first time you save a project after enabling the work sets and project sharing. So the central file stores the ownership information of all the work sets in a project. Okay, so basically your central file coordinates the changes made by team members and stores information about work set ownership. All right, so this is now our uh, central file. So I'm going to save this one to make it officially the central file. So I'm going to select the save here. Let's save that. So as you can see, this is the first time that the project has been saved since the work sharing was enabled. So this project will therefore become the central model. So do you want to save this project as the central file? Yes. Select yes. Okay. So it will now be saved on that folder. 
And one thing that you will notice <clears throat> if your file is a central file is there is no save here. So you cannot select the save. But if you want to create a new central file, for example, your central file somehow it, it got uh, messed up or corrupted and it so happened you have a new file. So you can save as that file as a new central file or an old file. Okay, you don't have any other choice, but you can use the old file and you can save it as a new central file. But for this one, you will notice if you open a central file, the save icon is disabled. But you can actually go to file here and then you can use the save as so just in case you want to uh, save it to another folder to make it a new central file. But anyway, so this is how the central file looks like. The save icon is disabled. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create work set. Okay, so that is what we need. So to create a work set after you enable the central file or after you create the central file, you need to select work set and then just create your work set here. So you will notice by default you have uh, two work set here. So shared levels and grids, the other one is uh, work set. So this is like your user created work set. Okay, so it is created, these two work set that we have here, it is created uh, by default when you enable the work sharing. So you can name this one if you want. And by the way, your work set one, it will contain all the MEP elements of a project. Okay, so if you have other, if you have elements here in your project and then you create your work set, it will be placed on work set one by default. But don't worry, you can put those elements to another work set if you want. Okay, so you can change the name of this. So you can rename that. So let's say this will going to be HVAC and then OK. And then all the levels and grids will be put to this work set here automatically. So let's say I want to create another work set for plumbing. So I'll just need to use new here. So let's say that we're going to be plumbing, oops, plumbing, okay, so let's say for the lighting and other discipline or services that you want to create. So as you can see, I am the owner of this work set. So let's say if I'm going to create a duct here, so make sure you activate or make the work set that is needed active so let's say you want to create a doc so make sure that the hvac is your active work set if you want to create lighting so before you create lighting elements so make sure lighting is the active work set okay etc etc so you know what i mean okay so let's say i want to create a uh, duct here so i want hvac and i am the owner so any elements that I will be creating under my name, like for example, HVAC, plumbing, or lighting, they will not be able to touch that. They will not be able to remove that or delete or whatever, okay? Because I am the owner of that. So, okay, let me just, okay, so I'll just select no. It's just asking me if I want the lighting work set to be the active work set, so I'll just select no. So by the way, you can also change the active work set here. So if you're using AutoCAD before, so this is just like changing the layer to your active layer. So let's say if you want to create lines some uh, walls, so make sure your active layer is on wall. So if you want to create a door, so make sure your active layer is door. So same with uh, work set. So if you want to do HVAC elements, make sure your active work set is HVAC. So that all the elements will be placed under the HVAC. So just in case you accidentally selected lighting and then you create HVAC elements don't worry about that you can just simply select those elements and change the work set here on the properties like for example my current work set here is lighting so if I create a duct there's my duct okay and then I select modify okay if I click this duct here and then check the properties, you can see that the work set is on lighting, which is wrong. 
So I just change it. So just select the correct work set. Okay? Just like that. Now, as a BIM manager, after you create all the work sets needed in the project, okay, the next thing that you need to do is you need to synchronize it. Okay? So you need to select uh, synchronize and modify settings. And then those work sets that I have created, I want that to be relinquished. So after synchronizing, relinquish the following work sets and elements. So as a B manager, uh, B manager, you need to relinquish all the work sets that you have created. Why? So that your other team members, the BIM drafter or BIM designer, they will be able to use those work sets that you have created. Because you're the BIM manager, no need for you to do the modeling. They are the one that who will be doing the drafting. So make sure you relinquish all the work sets that you have created by checking this. Okay, so that they can make the work sets you created as their own work set. So let's say I'm, I am a drafter number one. So what I can do is I can go to work sets. As you can see, there's no owner anymore because you are uh, already relinquish it. So if I am the drafter, so I can just select the HVAC here and then I can just select here. Yes. So that I will going to be the owner of that work set. So that let's say these three, uh, these two people here, the lighting people and then the plumbing people, they will not be able to touch my elements here because I am owning this work set by selecting yes here. There you go. You, will, you can see my name here. Now, okay, yes. Now the next thing that you can do is, Anyway, you just go back again, just synchronize it. Okay, so I am the B manager, so I am synchronizing and relinquishing all all the work sets that I have created. Now, after you create the central file, just close it. You do not work directly to central file. Okay, but what you do is you work to a local file. Okay, so you need to create a local file. So the local file, it is a copy of a central file that is saved to the drafter's computer. So how to create a local copy? So to do that, so let's say I am drafter 1 or B modeler number 1. After the B manager set up the central file, so I know the location of the central file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select open and then look for that central file. Do not touch these two folders here. Okay, your only concern is the Revit file there, the central file. Okay, so I am drafter 1, so I want to create a local file. So when you select the central file, you will notice here automatically create new local is already checked. Do not uncheck that because if you do that, you will be opening project 101 central file. So make sure this is checked so that you are creating a new local file. So that's how you create a local file. So you do your stuff on the local file and then you just synchronize it so that the central file will going to be updated and your other team members, once they uh, synchronize, it will going to be updated also their model. Okay, so let's say I want to create a local copy, just select open. And then this will now my local copy. So. You will notice the save icon here is enabled because I'm just using a local copy, not the central file. Now, let's say I'm the drafter number one. Uh, my task is doing the HVAC. So I need to go to collaborate or actually I can click this icon here to open the work sets. So I need to make the HVAC as my own. There you go. So there's the name of the drafter number one. And then select your OK. And then make sure your work set is the active work set. Okay? Now, so let's say I already done with all the modeling. So let's say I'll just create a duct here. Okay, so there's the duct. There you go. I'm done. So what I need to do is I need to go to the synchronize and modify settings. And then I do not want to relinquish the ownership of my work set. 
so that's why I'm not going to check this one so that it will prevent them to modify the elements that I have created okay so this is important because if they really want to edit your elements so they need to ask permission to you okay so you, they need to ask permission to you so that there is a communication that will gonna happen between the drafter one and then the drafter two so that they can talk so it's not good to just simply go to other drafters elements and then edit it without telling the original owner of that element so in my case i'm not going to synchronize this and relinquish by checking this so i'm just going to synchronize it so that the central file will going to be updated and then the other users will be able to see the elements that i have drawn so i'll just select here okay okay and then i'm done so let's say the lighting people will come now okay so just you still have to be in your model okay relinquish elements no i'm not going to relinquish it i'll just keep the ownership there you go so as you can see the central file now is updated so open this is the one so as you can see the central file now is updated so that's how it goes so you just need to create a local file to work on your model okay just override it okay and then if the other drafter like for example lighting did modeling to your to the central file so if you want to see their changes in case they already synchronize it so you just need to go to collaborate and then just reload the latest so that you'll be able to see the updated uh, changes. All right. So basically, that's how the work sharing works. Okay. So if ever they want to edit your your elements, so when they try to move this, let's say I am the lighting, they try to move this one. So what will happen is there is a warning that will gonna appear here on the lower right corner telling you that you need to ask permission or request to the original owner of that particular work set okay so that communication will happen okay it just so happened in the newer version of Revit I can't do it simultaneously like open to a Revit project because I only have one uh, Autodesk account. I only using one computer. But if you're going to check out my previous topics about Workset, you will see what I mean. So you just watch the other uh, lower version of Workset work sharing that I have uh, discussed in this channel for you to be able to understand more about work sharing. But the basic things about work sharing is this, the one that I just discussed now. Okay, so hopefully you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.